Hi there! Welcome to another exciting episode of Centurions, where we feature anything man-made that has been in existence for 100 years and more. This week, we'll be going all the way to India, where we have an edifice that is amazing in every sense of the word. It's the one and only, the Taj Mahal. It is located in the southern bank of the Yamuna River in Agra, India. The Taj Mahal is a gigantic mausoleum complex commissioned in 1632 by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan to house the remains of his beloved wife. It was constructed solely to immortalize his wife, Mumtaz Mahal, which means chosen one of the palace, who died in childbirth in 1631, having been the emperor's inseparable companion since their marriage in 1612. It was built over a 20-year time frame. The famous complex is one of the most outstanding examples of Mughal architecture, which combined Persian, Indian, and Islamic influences. At its center is the Taj Mahal itself, with its glittering white marble that seems to change color depending on the daylight. It was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. It remains one of the world's most celebrated structures and a stunning symbol of India's rich history. In its harmonious proportions and its fluid incorporation of decorative elements, the Taj Mahal is distinguished as the finest example of Mughal architecture. Other attractions include twin mosque buildings placed symmetrically on either side of the mausoleum, lovely gardens and a museum. One of the most beautiful structural compositions in the world, the Taj Mahal is also one of the world's most iconic monuments visited by millions of tourists each year. The plans for the complex have been attributed to various architects of the period, though the chief architect was probably Ustad Ahmad Lahauri, an Indian of Persian descent. The five principal elements of the complex are the main gateway, garden, mosque, jawab, which literally means answer, a building mirroring the mosque, and mausoleum, including its four minarets, were conceived and designed as a unified entity according to the tenets of Mughal building practice, which allowed no subsequent addition or alteration. The construction commenced in about 1632. More than 20,000 workers were employed from India, Persia, the Ottoman Empire and Europe to complete the mausoleum itself by about 1638 to 1639. The adjunct buildings were finished by 1643 and decoration work continued until at least 1647. In total, construction of the 42-acre complex spanned 22 years. A tradition relates that Shah Jahan originally intended to build another mausoleum across the river to house his own remains. That structure was to have been constructed of black marble and it was to be connected by a bridge to the Taj Mahal. He was deposed in 1658 by his son Aurangzeb and was imprisoned for the rest of his life in Agra Fort. Resting in the middle of the white plinth, 23 feet high, the mausoleum proper is of white marble that reflects hues according to the intensity of sunlight or moonlight. It has four nearly identical facades, each with a white central arch rising to 108 feet at its apex and slanted corners incorporating smaller arches. The majestic central dome which reaches a height of 240 feet at the tip of its finial, is surrounded by four lesser domes. The acoustics inside the main dome cause the single note of a flute to reverberate five times. The interior of the mausoleum is organized around an octagonal marble chamber 
ornamented with low-relief carvings and semi-precious stones. Therein are the cenotaphs of Mumtaz Mahal and Shah Jahan. Those false tombs are enclosed by a finely wrought filigree marble screen. Beneath the tombs, at garden level, lie the true sarcophagi, which is an ancient coffin like the ones used by the Egyptians in ancient times. Standing gracefully apart from the central building at each of the four corners of the square plinth are elegant minarets. Shah Jahan had an almost insatiable passion for building. At his first capital, Agra, he undertook the building of two great mosques, the Moti Masjid, Pearl Mosque, and the Jami Masjid, the Great Mosque, as well as the superb mausoleum known as the Taj Mahal. At Delhi, Shah Jahan built a huge fortress palace complex called the Red Fort, as well as another Jami Masjid, which is amongst the finest mosques in India. Shah Jahan's reign was also a period of great literary activity and the arts of painting and calligraphy were not neglected. His court was one of great pomp and splendor and his collection of jewels was probably the most magnificent in the world. The tomb is the central focus of the entire complex of the Taj Mahal. It is a large white marble structure standing on a square plinth and consists of a symmetrical building with an iwan, which is an arch-shaped doorway, topped by a large dome and finial. Like most Mughal tombs, the basic elements are Indo-Islamic in origin. The base structure is a large multi-chambered cube with chamfered corners forming an unequal height sided structure that is approximately 180 feet on each of the four long sides. Each side of the Iwan is framed with a huge pish tack or vaulted archway with two similarly shaped arched balconies stacked on either side. This motif of stacked pish tacks is replicated on the chamfered corner areas making the design completely symmetrical on all sides of the building. Four minarets frame the tomb one at each corner of the plinth facing the chamfered corners. The main chamber houses the false sarcophagi of Mumtaz Mahal and Shah Jahan. Their actual graves are at a lower level. Indian writers have generally characterized Shah Jahan as the very ideal of a Muslim monarch. But though the splendor of the Mughal court reached its zenith under him, he also set in motion influences that finally led to the decline of the empire. His expeditions against Balkh and Badakashan and his attempts to recover Kandahar brought the empire to the verge of bankruptcy. In religion, Shah Jahan was a more orthodox Muslim than Jahangir or his grandfather Akbar, but a less orthodox one than Aurangzeb. He proved a relatively tolerant ruler towards his Hindu subjects. In September 1657, Shah Jahan fell ill, precipitating a struggle for succession amongst his four sons, the Rashikor, Murad Baksh, Shah Shuja and Aurangzeb. The victor Aurangzeb declared himself emperor in 1658 and strictly confined Shah Jahan in Agra Fort until his death. In every sense of the word, the Taj Mahal is stunning and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Centurions. Till I come your way again, please subscribe, like and share. I'm Dimitri and I'm saying thank you for watching.